Oh, Sikorsky is the leading uh, helicopter manufacturer in the world. We, uh, we build the uh, iconic Black Hawk helicopter, Seahawks, uh, mostly military, although we have a thriving commercial business. And then, of course, all of that leads to a, a pretty good aftermarket business as well. So vertical lift is our, is our primary focus. Well, the, the theme of the conference was strategic execution. And I, and I guess if I had one sentence to sum it up from the presentation, it was that 85% of sustainable success is execution, 15% is strategy. So the focus was, and, and primarily in the defense industry, was that uh, whether it be uh, through operational execution or more importantly through developmental execution, that we as an industry had to get better at what we do because the data is astounding. The amount of, of, of months late, cost overruns, program terminations that we're seeing in a very constrained DOD budget uh, cycle has, has, has got to be a signal to us that we've got to get our development programs uh, together and get them out the door on time and within the cost that the contract specified. You know, there will be 10 people in here, eight will say it's negative, two will say it's positive. And I'm lucky enough to say that uh, actually we're one of the two that would say positive. As the, as the uh, quadrennial defense review that Secretary Gates conducts says, where should we be focusing our dollars? It's clear that asymmetric warfare, i.e. nonlinear warfare, and insurgency and terrorism are top of the list. And the fact of the matter is you don't move in that environment unless you're in a helicopter. It's too dangerous on the ground. We've all seen the videotapes. We've all heard of IEDs. So helicopters help that. So we're actually seeing, I wouldn't say tremendously growing. I would say solid growth, but uh, not the kind of trouble, I would say, that some of the other uh, contractors are in right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If, um, if you go back to Katrina, Haiti last year, Haiti this year, the tsunami in Asia a couple of years ago, if you saw a helicopter on your television screen and said, that's a Sikorsky, you would have been right over 80% of the time. So we're seeing, we're seeing a lot more of, of the government using that as a reason to keep their quantities in the Defense Department budget but then we're also seeing historical government missions of that kind of life-saving and rescue actually being contracted out to commercial operators. So what we're seeing is our commercial business is starting to get and reap the benefit of the life-saving nature of our product. As the militaries become really focused on military operations, many international militaries were also doing let's say paramilitary, quasi-military missions. Nobody has the time to not do what is in their core. So they're contracting that out, saves money, frees up the assets to do the military mission, and we're reaping the benefit, primarily because of the size class of the helicopters we build, which tend to be on the larger size. We had, we had a great series of events as as we were tripling literally our revenues over the last couple of years our facilities in Connecticut could not you know contain that kind of growth so we had the great opportunity to maintain a solid professional workforce in Connecticut and then move a lot of this needed capacity to lower cost sources we found a tremendous opportunity in Poland with a factory that used to build a MiG aircraft fighter a day, a Russian fighter a day, was basically idle. So we moved in with an opportunity to replace that work with good solid uh, helicopter work, government supported, we purchased, and they're turning out product that we can put into the government supply chain as well. So uh, it, we've put about three quarters of the extra hours that we've been adding have all been into lower cost sourcing and the majority of that internationally. We just announced a major uh, joint venture in India to produce structure for our product. Um, we have announced more uh, work in China for some of our commercial products and 
We have a great source in the Czech Republic who is our second largest supplier by dollar to our entire supply chain. So I would say Eastern Europe, we're moving into Asia. I think Latin America is our next focus. I think the biggest challenge will be to ensure that as we see the military budgets level and probably even slightly decline, that we've got to replace that work. And, but I think, I think the natural outcome of, of what we do for our government is that many countries in the world look to see how the United States does military, paramilitary mission. They see the equipment they use. And so our view of the world is we have to double everything except the U.S. government to go international military. Our support, uh, our support business as well will increase its capability. So, so I think we have a good plan to replace or at least amplify the business that the U.S. government has for us. Yeah, that's an interesting question, and I'll answer it, I'll answer it a lot differently. The, the, in the Chinese market, we are absolutely banned from any military activity or any dual-use activity. So strictly commercial in China, it will be very big, and we will be there. But for our particular product set, India has got probably the largest single, let's say, medium-term to long-term potential. So India will be a huge player in terms of the quantity of government and commercial helicopters that they need as they start to become a, a dominant world power. As a percent of GDP, uh, and you know the Indian GDP is quadrupling every 10 years, as a percent, 8.5 percent, is three times what our government spends as a percent of, of GDP. So, uh, and again, given the nature of the threat, it's not we're going to line two big armies up and clash. It's insurgency, it's small operations, it's counterterrorism, and that, of course, is uh, sadly, uh, is good for us. Uh, if you look at South Korea as an example, and even Taiwan, they're virtual mirrors of the U.S. military structure, including equipment. And so that really helps us and gives us some, some room to continue our top and bottom line growth. Right now, the Middle East is the largest growth area in our portfolio outside the United States. Uh, you know, they're right there, the, the threat is there, but our product is there. And they watch our helicopters go out and back every day. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we have a million combat flight hours in our products. A million combat flight hours. And not one material or workmanship defect. And everybody sees that. And so, uh, whether it be the United Arab Emirates who have announced recent purchases. Bahrain has announced recent purchases. Saudi Arabia has announced recent purchases. So short term to midterm, that's the growth area for us. Percent of production overseas is, is, is still pretty small, probably on the, on the 10 to 20 percent scale. Uh, I, see it, I see it growing. Uh, the quality of the workmanship is good. The barriers in terms of logistics and licensing are being ameliorated by some favorable reactions of our country to others. And what we're finding is when countries want to buy major fleets of, of, of product, they don't just want to buy it. They want to build it. They want the jobs. They want the technology. They want the intellectual property. And so you can carefully provide that and it will increase the production that's done overseas as we move forward without a doubt.